Good evening everybody and welcome to story time. Have you had a nice Sunday? Have you been in the paddling pool? Have you had water fights? Have you eaten lots of ice cream? Brilliant. Fantastic. So, now some of you, maybe, not maybe everybody, because depending on how close we are, will have been able to see your granny or granddad, or however you call them, nanny, granny, gran, grandma, papa, pops, granddad, noni. There's loads of combinations. Basically, granny and granddad. So tonight's story is dedicated to all my grannies and granddads. Okay, so there's two stories tonight. I just thought I would do them back to back for you. But obviously, you can stop them whenever you want and you can read the other one tomorrow. Okie dokie. So, I love you, Grandma and Grandad. So the first one is all about Grandma. Okay, so we sit on all snuggly. Have we got our pyjamas on? We got our favourite teddy joining in. Superb. Okay, here we go. Just move that way. There we go. Oh. You see that okay? Little Bear and Grandma were eating breakfast. Grandma asked Little Bear suddenly, Why do I have such a big nose to help you find food grandma told him but i just looked around and i found these berries agreed little bear ah replied grandma food isn't always that easy to find grandma laid little bear down to the river can you see anything to eat? she asked. Little Bear shook his head. Can you smell anything? Grandma added. Food, answered Little Bear. Then use your nose to find it, Grandma told him. Oh, what has he found? Little Bear followed his nose to some stones on the riverbank. He turned one over. A fish, he laughed. Yummy! Dinner, smiled Grandma. Good job, Little Bear. I love you, Grandma, Little Bear whispered in her ear. Grandma, asked Little Bear suddenly, why do I have such sharp claws? To help you find food, came the reply. But you told me I have my nose for that, said Little Bear in surprise. Ah, said Grandma. Sometimes your nose leads you to the food, but you still have to work to get it. She took Little Bear to the woods. Sniff the air, she reminded him. Little Bear started to follow his nose. He stopped at a fallen tree. I can smell food, Little Bear said. I still can't see it, but I know it's here. You'll need to use your claws, Grandma told him. Oh, look at his tongue, he's determined. Little Bear dug his sharp claws into the bark. He broke off a small piece. <gasps> Ant! He laughed. Delicious! Lunch! Smiled Grandma. Good work, Little Bear. I love you, Grandma! Little Bear yelled. Grandma! Asked Little Bear suddenly. Why do I have such a long tongue? How long is your tongue? <laughs> How long is it? Let me see. Oh, that's really long. No sticking your tongue out, Karen. To help you find food, Grandma said at once. 
But you told me that I have my nose and claws to do that, little bear, said little bear surprised. Sometimes the best food is hard to reach, grandma told him. She took little bear to a clearing. Smell the air, grandma said. Little bear sniffed hard. He sniffed his nose. <gasps> food! He told Grandma, a huge bee's nest hung from a branch above him. I know what to do, laughed Little Bear. Look at me, he called. He hooked the nest with his sharp claws, lifted it down and opened it up. Honey, he smiled. Mm -mm. Supper, said Grandma. But Little Bear's big claws couldn't reach the food. <gasps> so what are you going to do now? Asked Little Bear. Use my long tongue, laughed Little Bear. And that's what he did. Brilliant Little Bear, laughed Grandma. How do you know so many things, Grandma? Asked Little Bear suddenly. That's easy, Grandma smiled. When I was small and curious, just like you, she said, you ask so many questions, you'll soon know lots of things too. And she hugged Little Bear tight. Do you know I love you, Grandma? Said Little Bear. I do, answered Grandma. She stroked Little Bear's sticky head. And you know, I love you too, she said. Oh, that was a nice one. So, the next time you see your granny, your grandma, your nonny, your nanny, your mini, make sure you tell them that you love them. I know you can't give them a squeezy cuddle, but you certainly can tell them that you love them. Now... If you're up for a double one tonight, it's Grandad's turn. I love you, Grandad. Now, I wonder what adventures they're going to get up to. You still sitting comfy? Okay, here we go. Little Bear and Grandad were walking by the river when Little Bear spotted a fish darting through the water. Quick, Grandad, he yelled. He dashed into the river, caught the fish and held it up for Grandad to see. Grandad smiled. You're fast, little bear, he said. I can remember when I was as fast as you. He started to cross the river and turned to little bear. My legs were one strong and speedy like yours, he added. But now I've found an easy way to catch a meal. Really, Grandad? asked Little Bear. What's that? Well, replied Grandad, I'm more crafty now. He stopped on a rock. I stand here at the rapids, Grandad said, standing very still. I'm patient. I wait until the fish jump out of the water straight into my mouth. Wow, Little Bear, said Little Bear. I love you, Grandad. You're so clever. Just then, Eagle swooped down. The beat of his wings ruffled the bear's fur. They saw his sharp claws. Little Bear ran straight up a tree. Grandad smiled. I can remember when I could climb as well as you, he said. My arms were strong, but now I don't need to run away. Really, Grandad? asked Little Bear. What do you do instead? Oh, well, replied Grandad, I'm bolder now. When Eagle swooped down again, Grandad barked his deep, gruff voice. He roared 
and Eagle swerved away over the mountain. Right, give me your biggest roar. You ready? Roar! Oh, yours was definitely scarier. Wow, said Little Bear. I love you, Grandad. You're so brave. They walked until they came across a slope where the earth was softer and deeper. Watch me, Grandad, called Little Bear. I can dig myself a really good hollow to sleep in through the winter. And Little Bear began to scrape away the soil. Grandad smiled. I remember when I could dig as well as you, he sighed. My claws were really sharp, but now I know a better way to find a hollow. Really, Grandad, frowned Little Bear, but where do you spend the winter? Well, replied Grandad, I'm wiser now. All I need to do is find a hollow tree. He padded through the woods in front of Little Bear. Follow me, he called. And Little Bear, and he led Little Bear to a huge tree. In the middle of its massive trunk was a snug hollow. I love you, Grandad, laughed Little Bear. You know so much. Little Bear looked up at Grandad. Well, will I ever be as crafty, brave and wise as you, he asked. Of course you will, replied Grandad. Shall I start teaching you now? Little Bear nodded. So Grandad took Little Bear to the rapids and taught him the crafty way to catch a fish. And the brave way to scare a bird away, Little Bear learned very quickly. Soon, soft flakes began to fall. Time to find us a hollow tree big enough for two, Grandad said. And he helped Little Bear to choose wisely. Little Bear snuggled up to Grandad. He felt really good. I love you, Grandad, he laughed. Grandad ruffled Little Bear's messy head. I love you too, Little Bear, Grandad said. The end. So, the next time you see Grandad, Papa, Pops, I can't think of another name for Grandad, please tell Papa, Grandad, that you love them very much. A double whammy! I hope you enjoyed them both. I send all my love to you all. Stay safe, snug as a bug in a rug when you go to bed tonight. Night night everybody. Bye until the next story time. See you later. Bye.